Roll call real quick. Uh, Matt's here. Zacharias here. Ashley's here. Garmin is here. Guillermo's here. All right, so we're all back. Um, there's no reportable action items um, taken during closed section that need to be reported. So we're just gonna move forward into point five, motion approving consent calendar. Um, I'm gonna do it all together, a motion to approve the October checks and warrants and approval of the minutes from the regular meeting on October 14th, 2020. Does anybody wanna talk about anything on those or do we wanna just approve them? Make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right. Approve. Uh, we need some more eyes. Aye. <laughs> All right. Um, Carmen, are you and I? Yeah, I said approve. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. All right, written communications. Um, any writ written communications that need to be presented? All right. So action items. Um, point A, review and interview the valid applicants to appoint director to the board vacancy and consider the motion to appoint the valid applicants to the board vacancy. Um, we're going to have, um, we're going to interview each um, individual and at the end of each individual individual's interview, we will open up for any comments or questions from the community. Uh, but there will be only two minutes to, um, to ask a question or to just make a statement. Um, that rule will be strictly adhered to because we need to move forward. Um, and you'll just need to put your little hand up icon and um, you'll be unmuted to state what you want to say. So we're gonna move forward now. And the first person we're gonna interview is uh, Mr. McManus. So could Mr. McManus um, be unmuted? So I do not have McManus um, in attendance. No, Mr. McManus. That's correct. Okay, we just wanna make sure, is Mr. McManus on a telephone? Is he? Uh, let's see if this is it here. Just want to double check, triple check. Yeah, let me see. He gave you all of his information of what he would be logging in on or calling in on. So just make sure his it gave you. I'm not Matt, I think you're frozen. I'm not, I'm not seeing a McManus here. If there's a McManus, please let me know. Matt, I believe you're frozen if you can hear. Oh, there you go. You're unfrozen now. How he's going to let you know if everybody's uh, mute? I'm sorry, um, Carmen, I couldn't hear you very well. Oh, I don't know. My mic is terrible. So how he's going to let us know that he's here if everybody's mute? She, she has the phone number that he gave um, and his name and his um, Zoom ID. Just he, he's already contacted her with the information that he'd be using. So if that information is not here on our screen, then we will know that he's not um, here. Okay, so can you move to the next candidate? So yep, we'll... I was just making sure, Ashley, have you checked everything? I've, I've double checked one more time. I've triple checked. So um, I guess we just have to move on for now and until okay. something serious, I'll let you guys know. All righty. So we're going to move on with um, Miss. We're blessed. Oh, yeah. He can actually, if he's on here, he can send a chat. Um, he, can, he, can do, he can do that. But just so you know, I have Chris Blessing unmuted and he's ready to go. Yep. So we'll go to Mr. Blessing. Hello, sir. Hi. Hi, Matt. Hey. So tell us a little bit about yourself and um, why it is you would like to be on the water board and just a little bit of your experience, your background, education, anything you'd like to tell us so we can learn Certainly. about you. Sure, sure. Um, well, I've been a resident here since uh, April of 2017, and uh, I'm a software engineer in the Bay Area. Um, 
So making that good commute for a while there before <laughs> COVID time set in. Um, you know, my experience is uh, mostly corporate, of course. Um, having the experience to, to work with people, to participate in a meeting, to get my thoughts and ideas across and, and work with others on their thoughts and ideas. And um, okay. my goal here in this application is to try to bring some positive change perhaps to, to the way the district is, is running and see if we can't solve some of these problems. We need solutions for these issues. And as an engineer, that's what I always fall back on is what sort of solutions can we bring to the table and, and really just kind of not so much worry about the past, but worry about the future, you know? Right. Um, so I've been, like I said, I've been an engineer, software engineer now for uh, approximately 20 years and worked for a number of corporations. And I've been up and down the corporate ladder uh, in terms of, of working with folks. And yeah, I just think we need uh, another honest uh, resident here who's concerned about the situation at hand and uh, someone you can feel good about working with. All right. Does anybody from the board have any questions for Mr. Blessing? I have a quick uh, question. Okay. Uh, it's actually spawned off of the answer that you just gave. What do you see as the situation at hand currently? What is your 10,000 foot overview of the current situation in the district and Certainly, the challenges uh, that we're facing and, you know, potential solutions to those situations? Well, there's a couple of arms, I think, uh, to, the, to the sprawling issues at hand, which are financial. Uh, we need to figure out the, how to get this district solvent at some point in the future. Um, there's the working or not so working relationship with our new developer, Angels Crossing. Um, and I think that uh, some fresh perspective, you know, for the board would be a good thing. I think that as a concerned homeowner, as someone who is uh, drawing upon this water supply as well as paying for it, um, the situation, so to speak, at hand is fast approaching a irreversible situation, you know? Um, and we just need to take some action. And I don't actually know what all those details are. I certainly couldn't even begin to think about it uh, without actually being a member. but. I do think that perhaps via uh, additional communication with the community, perhaps uh, more more detailed communications with uh, AC as they see fit. And of course, learning, first and foremost, learning about the current board and the current motives for things uh, would help, you know, shed some light on, on those solutions that we need. And again, I don't know what they are yet, but uh, I look forward to working towards them. Okay, thank you. No problem. Carmen, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to ask you, are you aware of the master agreement that exists between developer in order to fund all the shortfalls uh, of the water district? Are you aware of the existence of that master uh, development? I'm sorry, that master agreement? Are yes. you aware of that? I have read through it, yes. And... Um, uh, do you know what is the problem that we are facing or the challenging that we are facing right now? Uh, well, I don't know them in detail, but I know that there's a serious financial uh, shortfall occurring and there's a year over year deficit growing. And I know that there are a lot of facets to that. There's, you know, our contract with Kern, there's our contract with the city of Patterson, there's the Belarus bonds funding, um, just from a financial perspective, uh, again, the only thing I have to go off of are the published financials on, on the Western Hills website. Uh, but yeah, I, basically it looks to me like financial dire straits and uh, anything that can be done about that is good for the district and good for the community, certainly for longevity. And um, you mentioned a several a good points about well the master the, uh, the master agreement for the funding the sewer in Patterson etc some financial challenges so had you thought in any um, solution or 
what would you like to bring to the board? If you were a board of director, uh, how would you would like to approach and try to um, fix or some ideas to uh, just finish with all this burden, financial burden in the district? Have you thought on some ideas? What it would be your first idea or your first challenge and how would you like to approach it uh, as a board member? Sure, sure. Um, my, my first challenge would be to learn actually, to figure out not, not, not necessarily the history of how we got here because I think that can be gleaned from most of the financial statements, but learn about uh, how you guys are operating. Um, what are your concerns? Because you guys are on the inside, not me, I don't actually know. And you know, if it comes down to uh, communications with various agencies or stakeholders, perhaps I can help in that regard. If it comes down to crunching numbers and coming up with some sort of budgetary type plan or solution, maybe I can help in that regard. Uh, I honestly don't yet know what I can bring to the table <laughs> until I get there. Um, and I don't wanna presume anything, but uh, certainly, uh, uh, you know, another concerned homeowner with like-minded goals, hopefully that you guys have, uh, getting to solvency and making sure everyone here feels comfortable with their water supply and their water bills, uh, you know, would be my first objective uh, after learning where we stand. So I have a question for you, Chris, it's kind of sure. follow on. Um, if you were to go through the financials and you realized as a result of going through that process that the only way that the water district becomes financially solvent is for the water rates and the sewer rates paid by the residents to increase substantially uh, uh, and the rates paid by the developer perhaps to increase or at least match in some fashion. Uh, would you be prepared to support that position even though you're a resident and that ends up meaning that you're paying more out of your pocket? Well, I think it's a touchy subject for a lot of folks here uh, sure. to be raising their rates. And I think the community should give some input on that. Uh, you know, how much are they willing to stomach if it need be that we increase the rates? Certainly the subsidizing of the city of Patterson sewer fees right now is uh, a bad situation, obviously. Um, and uh, I think residents are gonna have to prepare for some sort of increase, at least on that side of things. But as far as the water rate goes, I mean, I'm prepared to, I would be prepared to take on whatever additional responsibility is necessary to help fund this district um, personally. Right. That said, I think we would have to have a flexible solution for residents here. You know, Some people simply won't be able to pay any more money and some people will simply not want to pay any more money. And uh, perhaps there's a way to work that out with them. Um, right. I'm not quite sure what that would be yet, but yeah, I realize that, that it's been a long time coming really uh, that uh, the rates have been a little bit too low to support itself, the district, right? Um, unfortunately. Okay, thank you, Chris. Sure. All right, um, so what we'll do is if there's no other question um, from the board members, we can open this up now for if anybody from the community would like to ask a question or make a statement, you'll have two minutes. Um, it has to be on this topic and it has to be regarding Chris Blessing. Um, it's not, this is not the time for any other comments. Um, that'll happen at the end of the meeting in our, in our own, you know, when people can freely speak about anything they like. This is specifically for Mr. Blessing. If you have a question for him or a comment. Um, so if anybody would like to say something um, or ask a question and Ashley, if you see somebody, please let us know. Sure. All right, so I'm taking that as no comments or questions. And then um, Ashley, did, uh, did 
Mr. Uh, McManus come in? Is that happened? He, he's, he's in and ready for us whenever we're ready. Okay, so um, I guess there's no questions from the community for Mr. Blessing. So let's go now to Mr. McManus. Okay, hold please. <laughs> Mr. McManus is with us. Hi, Mr. McManus. How are you tonight? Good. How are you doing? Thank you. Good. Hey, have a quick question for you first to start. Um, are you a homeowner or are you, do you have like your name on the title or deed for your home up here in Diablo? Uh, not currently. Um, I do live up in Diablo Grande. I am married to um the person on title at my residence at 9634 cabernet court um so okay if that's a threat issue let me know mr hobbs would you like to chime in on this one are we yeah i mean i guess we have a question because the water code requires that it says each director basically shall be a holder of title land within the district so unless okay. unless a person's name appears on title i don't i don't know that we're in a position to that contrary to that, unfortunately. So, Matthew, that, that, I think no, that's all I've got. Even the fact that California is a community property state. I mean, we're not we're not really in a position to determine community property rights. We can only go by by what the code says. So, I I don't know about that. Okay. Yeah. When would that issue on title have to be resolved? As like as of now, or can it be something that happens later? I mean, I would think I would think as of now for purposes of this vacancy, but to the extent it can get resolved and you're some on title and if there's a, if there's a future vacancy or you want to run for election, then then that would suffice. I would imagine depending on how title is, is changed. OK. Thank you, well, Mr. McManus. I want to say thank you because I, I appreciate um, you living up here and and wanting to be involved. It's been a long time with not a lot of people being involved. So thank you very, very much um, for putting in an application. And if that stuff gets squared away, please in the future, feel free to uh, to jump in again. Yeah, I really... a question, when does this, uh, when does this interview process, I mean, when does the appointment of this new director occur? I mean, is this sort of like, Tonight. you know, what's the timeline? Tonight? Okay. Tonight. So I'm out. <laughs> sir. All right, thank you, sirs. All right. All right, so we're gonna move to, um, is it Mr. Uh, Murphy? It is, and I also don't have a Mr. Murphy jumping in. Um, I don't know if they're having, all, he's also having tif difficulties, uh, but I don't show him online. Maybe, so he Mr. Can Maybe he can chat or call in. If Mr. Murphy is able to hear, um, there is a phone in number so you can um, just pick up your phone and call in. And um, as long as uh, Ashley knows your phone number, um, call in and um, we can interview you. And we'll move on to um, Mr. Lambert. And he's with us. Cool. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, sir. How you doing? Good. All right. Tell us a little bit. You are a homeowner, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm a homeowner. All right, great. All right, um, would you um, uh, give us a little bio about yourself, a little bit of background sure. and why you would like to be on the board? Sure, uh, I've lived up here since May, 2018. Uh, my background is I am a journeyman industrial mechanic, uh, machinist and a millwright. I currently run a machine shop in Livermore now. Um, I've spent many, many of days and hours in refineries and petroleum plants and chemical plants, uh, repairing all types of machinery, particularly pumps in water filtration plants, and they can't dump that stuff back in the bay. So that's uh, pretty much been my job for my entire adult life. Um, 
I have repaired uh, and built many tanks like what we currently have up there now. So uh, that's pretty much what I do for a living. And what what are your feel what what would you feel like you can bring to the board? Why why are you running? Why do you feel like you would like to run? And what what uh, one of the things I wanted to run for was because uh, the one thing I noticed is that we're coming up on 15 years of infrastructure on this thing, and repairs are going to need to be done. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of the ins and outs with building pumps and repairing them, that type of stuff. So I'd like to basically give my knowledge and help the community save some money and put it towards you know our infrastructure and keeping the cost of water down that type of stuff got it does anybody from the board like to ask him a specific question yeah i i would if if for some reason you could were not elected would you be willing to serve on a committee to serve that same function which is to act as a a, a check uh, on on the aging infrastructure and the replacement of uh, parts and pumps, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I would like to... Go ahead, Carmen. Uh, okay, so um, it will be the same question um, that I asked to Chris Blessing. Uh, Mr. Randy Lambert, are you aware for uh, uh, the existence of the master agreement between developer and the district in which the developer has assumed the financial obligation um, to fund the shortfalls and like a permanent support for the district? Are you aware of that uh, master agreement? Yes, ma'am. And um, what do you know about it? Uh, that they're supposed to subsidize a portion of it until we have uh, enough homes up here to make the water district solvent. Okay, and do you know what is the financial, or you, are you aware of the financial um, challenges that the water district is um, it's going through right now? Yes, I know we, uh, we currently owe Kern County about two million bucks um, and some other companies and the sewer district problems and all that type of stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty aware of it. And if you were selected as a board member, have you thought and and I don't know what, what is your thoughts? What would you like to bring to the board in the case that you were selected uh, for all these financial issues that the Western Hewitt District is going through? Well, I hopefully is, come to some agreement with some type, you know, whoever the developer is going to be, whether it's Angels Crossing or whoever, come to an agreement to work that out. Um, I know Guillermo's talked about if we have to raise water rates, if, if that's something we have to do for a short period of time, that type of stuff to help out and help us get us back on track, you know. Okay. No more questions. Any other board member have a question? For Mr. Lambert. All right. Um, Ashley has, um, or well, actually, let's, we got to open it up for um, the community. Does anybody from the community like to ask Mr. Uh, Lambert a question or make a comment? I don't have anybody can, can you, on can my you end. Check the chat comments because there could be somebody asking questions in chat, Ashley. Uh, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. And I've been keeping my eye on the chat. I don't see anything in reference to Mr. Lambert. It looks like something um, Steve. Uh, Steve just says he can't unmute. Perhaps he has a question. Uh, just yeah. one sec. All right. Yes. Yeah, Steve stock. Mel, I believe stock. Mel. Yes. Working on yep. it. There is a lot of chatting here. Um, Ashley, are you checking on that? It looks I, like there's I, a raising hand function that someone said isn't monitored. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but. Uh, let me take a look at that. Yeah, because I Perhaps okay, people so, are raising their hands. And it's just not that and I, I do <laughs> notice that there was a question on chat um, from a user just asking if all the board members um, are residents and on title. 
And the answer to that question is yes, um, except yes. for Guillermo. And he is um, um, uh, a representative of World International um, when he was appointed to the board of directors to serve out his time. Um, but other than that, everyone here are titled landowners. Just for those that might um, have read that question on the chat. Uh, it's the only one I see. So Steve Matt, this is, uh, this is Steve Stockwell. I was able to, uh, I was able to get unmuted. I just wanted to let everyone there know some problems that I've had and I'm assuming other residents may have, be, uh, may have the same problems. Um, I've used Zoom multiple times before for other purposes and have always just been able to take a link, put the, um, put the meeting number, put the password in and get in without an account. Today, I was prompted on two different PCs stating that I was not able to get into the meeting without a Zoom account. So in the meantime here, I was able to actually create the account and get in here. Uh, the comment that I have would just be, and I apologize that it came in at this particular point because I would have preferred that it came in earlier. Um, I would just say that uh, my, my particular um, vote at this uh, time would be for Mr. Blessing. I, I understand his points. Um, I, I agree with a lot of what he's saying. And uh, that, would be, that would be my two cents to, to hopefully get him on our board. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate your comment. And uh, Steve, do you have any question for the candidate that basically um, what is about if any of the residents, they have a question to the candidate? I do not have any specific questions to the candidates at this point. I just mainly wanted to let all of you know of some of the technological challenges that some others may be having today with the first use, use of Zoom. Because I think it would be very interesting and very useful from the community to participate and they, if they want to ask questions to the candidates, just please do so. So that will be very helpful. Yes, good point. And um, I, I noticed that um, another individual on chat mentioned something about um, whoever set this meeting up, sit, set it up with authentication. Um, once again, this is our very first um, Zoom meeting for the Western Hills Water District. And we apologize if things are not going as smoothly as we wish. Um, again, this is our first time. This is the governor's stay at home order. And we're trying to do things a little bit different um, than just having a free for all on the telephone. So please bear with us as we're trying to work out all these bugs. Um, and I, again, I apologize if there's something on our end that's not working right. And we'll try to work those bugs out for the next meeting. All right, um, let's see, is Mr. Uh, Murphy, have we been able to find him? No, still nothing from Mr. Murphy. Okay. All righty, um, any other questions for Mr. Lambert? Nope, you just muted him, so I get, let's- uh, oh, I, have another, I have another question that in fact, it's coming from the public and I think it's a very good question. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Randy, are you aware or do you know about the Brown Act? Oh, he's mute. Just one second. Just one second. He's coming back. What do you mean, like when it went into place or? He's with us. I don't... All right, Mr. Uh, Lambert, you're back on with us. Did you hear the question? Did you... Yeah, I mean, the Brown Act went into went into act in like 1953, I believe. So, I mean, I don't, I don't really understand what your question is. Uh, do you know that the Western Hewater District, it's been uh, run, on oh, not run, I mean, we had to go by the Brown Act, different from the HOAs that they have, the Davis Sterling Act. So, so right. there are different yeah. things. So you are aware that in the case that you were um, a board of director, you need to go through the Brown Act? Right. I don't know all the rules, but I, I know about it. I'm not first in it. 
Okay, there was a good question from the public. That's why I'm um, repeating it. Okay, that's it. Um, I see that there is people just sending text messages. So Ashley, are you uh, reading it? Yeah, I'm trying to keep up there. Uh, so I do have I do have a comment that's coming in from Doug Moore. Give me just one sec. I have a lag on my end too. Doug, are you with us? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hi, Mr. Okay, Moore. Uh, um, again, I think a lot of people are having trouble uh, figuring out how to how to signal you to get on uh, on the air here. Uh, We're all working it out together. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> I had meant to uh, comment when uh, the comments for blessing. Um, I have met him on uh, several occasions and have followed a lot of his uh, comments and responses on social media. And I find him to, to be extremely balanced in his approach on things. And I'd like to uh, uh, say that I, I favor him as a candidate. You don't have any question for him? No, I don't. Okay, Matt. Thank you very much, Mr. Moore. All right, so our last candidate is Mr. Mosley. Is he there? Yep, just one second, please. Hello, this is Walter Mosley. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good, how about yourself? I'm fantastic, thank you for having me this evening. Yes, thank you for coming back. All right, um, same question for you as the others and that um, I know we've interviewed you before but a lot of people may not have heard um, your comments. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your education, what you, know, what you bring to the board, what you're wanting to bring to the board, what you offer and um, I'm, let, we'll go from there. Um, thank you. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Walter Mosley. Um, I have been um, a practicing attorney here in, um, in California, Southern California, in particular for the past um, 15, 16 years. Graduate of Harvard Law School in the East Coast, came here as a corporate lawyer. Um, as it relates specifically to my practice, I do a lot of corporate transactional work. I represent um, a lot of boards. I've been in a ton of board meetings I'm very familiar with. Um, with the type of transactions that um, a, uh, this, this entity would, would make. Additionally, um, and specifically, the last time I think I spoke about my experience with the uh, representing the Glendale Water and Power uh, Company uh, while I was at Skadden Arps. Um, and so uh, currently I am the, I've been put forth as a representative of, of uh, Angels Crossing, uh, the developer. And um, I'm excited to be able to participate um, uh, on the board um, and help drive the business of the um, of uh, of the water company, however I can, and be a resource to the community um, and to the company. Great. Does anybody here have any questions for him? Um, I do. I think it's, it will be the same question. But first, um, there was some question from the public that it say, how can Mr. Mosley can be in the board? He's not owner of the record here. So um, he is representing the developer. Is that correct? Yeah, I can, I can, yeah. I can jump in on that. Water code 34700, if, if, if a if the owner of the title of land is not an individual person, it allows the legal representative, a holder of title to land uh, within the district and, and Angels Crossing has provided that authorization um, prior. Okay. So that was the question from the public that I want to just clarify. Uh, so he's allowed to be a candidate and is representing the developer. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Mosley, the same, the same question for, that I uh, run for the candidates, uh, the same candidate. So um, are you aware of the master agreement between the developer 
and the district in which the developer has assumed the financial obligation and permanent supporting um, funding the shortfalls in the district. Are you yes, aware of that? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, of course, I think that you know about the Brown Act, correct? That's correct. Okay. So uh, what would you bring as a representative uh, representing the developer um, to the board, knowing that we have a lot of financial challenges in the district? So what, what it would be your proposal, not proposal, but your ideas that you would like to bring if you were um, a board member representing the developer? Sure, I think uh, ultimately having someone on the board and having someone in close communication that works with the developer um, that has a fiduciary duty to the uh, the water district would water district would be quite important. I thought this would be very helpful um, to helping to manage um, both uh, the new opportunities. I think by building uh, the community and bringing in new community members that can also participate and help um, lessen some of the overall strain of the. Uh, of the, the water and the water rates on the current residents. Uh, but ultimately I think it's, it's, it's helping to maintain um, um, that, that communication sort and being able to be an advocate from, from the inside. I think also my experience, my professional credits and my experience kind of doing this type of work, um, representing uh, a, a vast range of companies um, throughout our state uh, will be helpful. Um, you know, making sure that um, what we do as a board um, is uh, consistent with and follows all the necessary laws and regulations. Um, and in, in, in someone who has uh, additionally, um, I, I have an engineering degree from the University of Michigan. Um, so I have a, a, a little bit of a technical background to help to contribute um, to the conversation and discourse and obviously um, I certainly know how to read a contract and know my way around them. So I'm happy to help out and to contribute in those, in those ways. Okay, so another question. Do, do you know how much it's the, um, how much the developer, according with the master agreement that I have mentioned before, do you, or, or are you aware of the amount that um, they are short or they haven't uh, paid? Um, I, with respect to the assumption, uh, the, excuse me, the assignment assumption and release agreement, it, um, it states in this recitals the amount of, um, of debt that was assumed um, by Angels Crossing from World um, in his purchase. So I'm aware of those, uh, those numbers as they are set forth in the uh, assignment agreement. Okay, uh, more specifically, and I don't want to refer from whatever world left, it will be more like moving forward after developer or former developer or international um, is not longer the main developer here. There is a financial obligation according with the, this master agreement since April, April mm -hmm. of today. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, probably you know, um, the district it has been taking money as a loan from the um, bonds proceeds that we have just to continue operating in the board, uh, continue operating the water district and provide water to the residents. So I don't have a, right now how much money it is, but it, it has been uh, quite a bit. So what it would be your plan if you were selected uh, just to pay back this amount of money to the reserves, to this reserve that we've been taking the money and move it forward. What would be your plan to continue uh, funding the district for the shortfalls? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the key to this is to work with the developer and work inside of, uh, of, of understanding what the plan is to, to, to create new resource and new revenue streams um, for uh, the district, right? So um, by bringing in more customers, um, that would help to eliminate 
the, 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 the shortfall by communicating and getting on the same page with um, the developer um, and, and being able to press them and push them um, in kind of a working together hand in hand strategy. I think that's really the way, you know, deals get done. I mean, I, I, I take a lot of pride. Um, there are some lawyers that are deal killers and there are some lawyers that help to move things along and help to get results. Ultimately, in the, the day, you're serving the people. And so, um, you know, I'm going to work hard with the rest of the board to, to help and to work with the, the developer to help to get to that goal, which is solvency um, and into profitability. So um, that's the, the opportunity is the undeveloped land in terms of growing, um, growing revenue. So we're going we're to look at that and then we'll look at the cost and we'll look at the other things that you typically do um, when trying to bring any company into profitability and see how do we grow it there. I have a question, Mr. Mosley. Um, how long have you been working with um, Angels Crossing? Um, with its um, with its principles, I've been working over ten years. So they've been here for seven months and haven't paid a single dime. Um, if you haven't been able to get them to pay in seven months, what makes us think you're going to get them to pay if you get on the board? Great. I, that's a wonderful question. And about six months ago, I applied to get on the board and really tried to get to the work of it. Um, I think there was a decision to go a different way. So I think if you, this time, if we, if we can make a good decision here with respect to me and the other candidates were fantastic as well. That's not me sharing that or not. I'm what, saying that there's what, work that wait, I can do. What, what does I'm sorry. I, would you allow me to finish my, my response? I, I didn't, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't, I don't want to be confrontational. I'm just trying to get to the, to the, to the finish line, which is, um, there's a lot of opportunity and there's a lot of ways for us to get to the end in terms of finding the partnership and, try, and getting them to resolve this in the, in the positive way that you want. Um, but I can't, my hands are tied if I'm not a part of what you're doing. So I put that, myself that forth. My I'm putting myself forth again. That was my question. Why are your hands tied? What, what being on the board changes things? I mean, seven months of not paying their contractual obligations if you're really wanting to be on the board, wouldn't it have been much more impressive to come here and say, hey, I actually did it here. They're paying now. And I'm the one behind the scenes making it happen. Wouldn't that look a lot better? Um, I think there are a lot of, as someone that is familiar with the conversation, I think there's a lot of information that, um, that the parties need to discuss. And there needs to be an opportunity um, because there's an opportunity for a fair and, um, and thorough discourse and not one that's confrontational. So I think that's what I'm trying to provide. It's difficult for me to do that um, and advocate on your behalf with the fiduciary duty of having to do so um, from the outside. So I can appreciate your position. It's, it's not unwarranted or unjust. Um, I am requesting um, that the community and the board gives me an opportunity to uh, try to find the solution. Um, and, and that's why I'm here today. Okay. Um, uh, Matthew, Matthew, let me, let me just add one thing in fairness. Uh, as a lawyer, you don't control the client. You can recommend to the client, but I mean, uh, the client ultimately decides. And when it comes to the question of who pays and how much get paid, it's really not Mr. Mosley's uh, within his power, right? Sure. Uh, to, to make that decision, just to be to be fair, I have a question for him. That's kind of a follow on, and it's it's the same question I asked the first candidate, which is, Mr. Mosley, at, at the end of the day, when uh, you or anybody else gets on the board, uh, you're all going to realize that there's only a few things in this paradigm that can can change, shift. You know, what do we pay for the water? Uh, how many residents we have? Uh, what, what do the residents pay us for the water and what is how much does the developer uh, subsidize? Th those are the four factors that we've been struggling with uh, on this board for, for 10 years. And, um, you know, admittedly, you're coming on the board as a representative of the developer uh, are, in the same fashion that I asked the resident uh, whether he was willing to consider and support the notion that the residents might have to pay more in order to make the water district solvent. Are you prepared to recommend to the to the your client um, as its representative that they may have to pay more in order to make the water district solvent? 
<clears throat> thank you, Hero, for the um, for that question. I think it was a very fair one. I also appreciate you um, noting that we don't always control our, our clients. They they do what they want to do at times. Um, although we do have considerable influence, um, I the answer is yes. I think when you're on the board, you you do what's in the best benefit for uh, for the board. That's that's kind of the duty. Uh, your, your, your job is to maximize the profits and maximize the revenue for the entity that you're representing. Um, so that's, that's, what I would, that's what I would be doing in that, in that case. That I would, if that is the solution that the, that the board um, and, and after the research and after the data, um, that's, the under, that's what is, is the best course of action that I'd make that recommendation uh, with the other members of the board. Okay. All right, so we'll open this up to the community. I have a real quick question, if you don't mind. Another, oh, okay, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Sakari. Sorry. Okay. Oh. Uh, it's kind of along the same lines as what we've been discussing, but I still think it's pertinent. Um, what are you prepared to do in the interim before the proposed development actually breaks ground, um, which actually could take quite some time, as we know? That is, what are you able to do as a representative of Angels Crossing to strongly influence them to pay their contractual obligations to help keep the district solvent in the meantime, in the meantime. and avoid and avoid bankruptcy before the development actually begins? Um, I think. Took my idea. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you for no, thank no, you no, for the was that question. Sorry. Sure. Thank thank you for thank you for your question. Um, the zealous advocacy for my client um, with respect to in this position that would be my fiduciary due fulfilling my fiduciary duty to the board uh, would be in order and that who would solve the day I would um, as um, as the other men and women on the board are, 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 are working really hard to get everyone to fulfill their obligations um, in, in a fair and trustworthy and an honest and straightforward way that's what I would do um, and I would do with everything that was within my um, within my professional power um, that I could. So um, I'm actually, as a representative of, uh, currently as a, as a list representative of Angels Crossing in order to be able to, to, to apply for this position, um, it, I think there's a desire on the behalf of Angels Crossing to get it right. Um, they could have picked a lot of people to be a part of this. Um, I'm, I think I'm well known to be a very fair-minded um, person, hardworking, um, I've, I, I have tremendous business experience um, and I think I'm creative in my thinking and my approach and I'm good at finding, um, finding solutions and hard solutions where there seem to be some. So that skill set that I'm going to bring to the table, that's what I'm, I'm going to apply, pl apply that to our, our collective interaction with the, um, with the developer to find some solutions, you know, starting from day one. I'm not waiting until uh, we increase the customer bit base by starting development. You start the job when you get the job. So um, again, I'm excited for the opportunity. Um, and I hope this time that we're able to get it through and I'm able to get through, but I will start working hard for you on day one. Thank you, Mr. Mosley. I just want to, I just want to say something. Um, the reality is that we don't have like a several um, developers as a candidate to run for the board and see who is going to be the one who will fund the water district. In reality, we just have one, that is Angel Crossing. And um, Walter Mosley is the representative uh, or is representing uh, the developer. I completely agree with Guillermo that sometimes I've been a um, board member for several, several years here representing uh, War International. And that sometimes you as a um, board member, you can advise or even any lawyer representing them, you can advise them to do certain things, but it's out of your control. Sometimes it's out of your control. Um, what your client, when it's the lawyer or my boss in that case, what they want to do. You as a board member, you try to do your best, communicate with the, uh, with the developer, what is the necessities, what they really, um, they get into. And um, it, it's not an easy position, right? But I understand also the fact that there is an agreement, a master agreement that is a legal document that is sitting there. 
and create certain obligations. And also I'm very concerned, I'm very preoccupied because uh, we still owe money to Kern County, like a point, one point, point, one point five or point six million dollars that we haven't paid. And also the next water bill, the 60% is coming up next month. And basically they need the money from January. And we're, we have a lot of uh, financial issues. Someone needs to pay that money. And I don't think the residents, they are going to pay for that. It's, it's a lot. So which other developer will be a candidate to take this burden and pay the money? Are the residents going to pay? I don't know but I'm very worried about the coming bill and the time, the time frame that we have to pay those bills. It's, it's, uh, it's very concerning. So Walter, do you wanna say something um, about these concerns that I have? Uh, forget about the money right now that we've been using from the, the, the funds from the, um, the proceeds from the bond proceeds. What is going to happen for the Cairn County that we owe money and we have to pay the 60% of the next uh, bill that is coming up and Cairn County, they want to check in January 1st. So I'm talking about, I would say one, no, almost more than $2.3 million that it's very important to pay. I'm very concerned about it. And we know that the, we could really trust in the developer and it's the only developer here that we have, but with a master agreement that they need to consider. So what would you like to say about that? I think um, you have a little bit knowledge about that. Sure, I mean, I- that the hearing right now about you. And right so, after that, I have a, I have a resident question. Thank you for the thank you for the question. I, I understood it to be kind of what what do I think are some strategies to help um, the district in its um, in its obligation uh, with uh, Kern County obligation. And ultimately, you know, I, I haven't read the deal in its in its in its, in its, in its completion, but I've been advised by some really smart. Um, um, Council and water lawyers that it's one of the uh, one of the worst water deals that you know currently exist kind of throughout the state, um, and that it's a deal that or an, a contract that would be ripe um, for uh, renegotiation if the right type of folks can get in front of it, and I think that means, in my opinion, that you got you have a developer in place. Um, that can come in, um, that you have to get kind of on your side to help you with this renegotiation. Uh, you wanna leverage, leverage that, that that could be a strength for you. Um, you need the type of folks that can build some inroads with the people over at, out, over at Kern. And I think you gotta figure out a plan for them because you, don't, you, know, you obviously you don't wanna get, get it turned off. So you gotta figure out, can we find a solution? Can we go in and can we talk and can we go and renegotiate and can we all work together to do that? And can we leverage the help and the assistance um, with, of, uh, of the current developer and helping us in that, in that plight or in that, in that strategy? That to me is, you know, there is a contract, um, but, you know, f you know, folks that are in business and the lawyers, we know that contracts are meant to be renegotiated. Um, there's, let's see if there's, that's what I would do. I would try to see if there's a lane that we can do that and if we can use the, the developer to help us along that path. And work with us to to speak to Kern to get Kern to uh, to see if we can find a solution. I do I do appreciate the fact that there's a January one moving deadline on that. I do have a I do have a resident hand up. Is the Are board still able to ask any questions or Are we have we moved past that portion? Um, or are you going to read the, the chatting or everybody's reading it or how does that work? Is this a question for Mr. Mosley? Um, yes. I mean, from the board, you have a question, is that correct? Yeah, it was so, just a very basic question. So let's, let's continue just, with the board members until all the board members are done asking questions and then um, we'll go to the residents. 
It's just a very okay. simple, basic question. It's actually kind of built on your answer that you just gave. Um, do you feel that you would be in a better position to do any potential negotiations with Kern County Water District um, if you're in a better financial starting point, showing good faith, making payments to them, um, showing that you are actually invested in um, you know, development that, that you've actually purchased? Do you think that they'd be probably more willing to work with you if you were paying your bills and keeping up on things like that? Or do you feel like going in um, the way we are right now, so far behind, it really kind of puts you at um, a detriment in that negotiation phase? Um, thank you for the question. Um, I can appreciate your thoughts on that. I think at the end of the day, the debt is somewhere around three or four million dollars. I, I, I'm hearing a uh, echo on my side. Is there something change? Ashley, if we could change 1080 for just a moment. Got it. Okay, and then once once um, the question's answered by Mr. Mosley, then if there's no other board questions, then we'll go to AJ 1080. Right. Sorry about okay. that, Mr. Mosley. That's okay. I think this so. So my understanding that there's a, a significant outstanding bill that isn't being paid currently. Um, and so, uh, yes, you're, you're right. There is a stronger position if there was a track record. But yeah. the fact that there's little to nothing happening now, the fact that you can get to the table and present something to move it forward um, is a step in the right direction. And it shows, um, and I think it shows the desire to get it right, particularly if you can figure out how to lock hands with your, 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 uh, your developer and do it together. I'm sure people are gonna ask, sure you would love to see a track record, but ultimately at the end of the day, um, what Kern wants is pretty simple. They want, you know, they want money, right? So um, you gotta show them the pathway to it um, and show them how you can get it done. And, and, and I think that's, that's the hope and the goal with doing a renegotiation or at least trying to get to the table with them to do that, um, you know, I've been to the table and, and representing tons of, of clients. Like not every, not every starting position, um, you know, is is Olympic gold. Sometimes you start, you know, at a, at a bad position, but you do the best that you can. You work hard, try to deliver. Okay, so we're going to move on to Mr. AJ Ten Eighty. He has a question for you, Mr. Mosley. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is great. I have questions for Mr. Mosley. I didn't hear all of his introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, we hear yes, you. Yes, we can hear you. Mr. Mosley? AJ Kennedy, you have a lot of background noise on your phone. What was that? So you got to hear you though. You got to shut off the background noise and ask your question. We can hear you. You are unmuted and you are ready to go. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Please ask your question. Okay, sure. Uh, Miss, this is for Mr. Mosley. Is this, is it fair to say that you're relying on your relationship with Seth Scott to validate your reputation and character? Just a second. We lost him for a second. Oh, there he is. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah, I was, I was, I was muted. Um, uh, how, long, how long have you known Seth Scott? Uh, uh, I got you, AJ. Um, let me ask you your first question. Um, my reputation um, is, uh, and I, I'm happy to, to step you down. Uh, I'm having a hard it's... time hearing you, but the next question is, do you know a fellow named Ronald Wayne Scarborough? I'm, I think you, you've asked me three questions. So I'm trying to figure out, um, you want me to respond to your question or, or is that part uh, of your setup? So, do, Mr. do you know a fellow named Ronald Wayne Scarborough, Mr. Mosley? And how do you know him? I, I do not know uh, Ronald Wayne Do you know Scarborough. that Seth Scott changed his name from Ronald Wayne Scarborough to Seth Scott? About I do not know that. Six when you joined the bar in California? I do not know that to be true. Do you know of Seth Scott's criminal records and his criminal record in Sacramento, including multiple felonies? I do not. I do not know that to be true. I'm curious as okay. to your understanding. You, I think you had a question. Are you, for, sir, did you have a question for me? You, is that correct? Um, 
I vouch for, as I stated before, I vouch for myself. You can look at my record. Oh, you, you can vouch look at for both. yourself. So are you trying to distance hey, hey, yourself from Mr. Scott? Because no, he has a criminal record. He was no. selling drugs or ingesting them. Do you know what types no, of drugs no, he was no, selling me, around 2006 stop, let me, when he joined the bar? Okay, let me stop this really quick. Let me stop this. Well, let me ask you this, Mr. Mosley. Were, okay, were you, were you, were you, you muted him. from your Mute him. Mute him for a moment. All right. Thank listen. you. Let me, we got to bring this back to order. Okay. <clears throat> um, the meeting here is to ask questions to a candidate regarding their qualifications to be on the water board. We have to stay focused on that. I know there's a lot of information um, and I, I'll just state this clearly. Um, the residents have submitted a lot of documentation to the board of directors over the last week. And it's, it's so much information, I haven't even been able to read it. There is so much information. This is not the forum for that situation right at the moment. Um, I can tell you that we also have received a petition from residents with almost 200 signatures on that petition. And that is almost a third of the community has signed a petition. A third of the community has signed the petition. So there's almost 200 signatures. And this petition has come to each of us board members. We've read the petition. Um, I don't, I, I have not had the time to read through all of the material that has come. So unfortunately, Mr. Mosley, you're not aware of that, but I think that this particular resident is bringing up issues that is within that information that has come to us board members to read. Um, but in fairness to Mr. Mosley, I don't believe that is the appropriate place for us to have um, an accusatory type question and answer. Um, I would rather have the community ask productful questions of him um, that pertains to his eligibility or his, you know, what he brings to the table. All of the information, I will let all the residents know, every board member here has received all of the information that you have sent us. I, I'm not sure how many of us board members have been able to get through it all because there is so much. Um, and as far as the petition, um, all of us board members have read your petition and we understand where the third of the community stands. And that is that the, a third of you, approximately 200 of you signed a petition. You do not want anyone from Angels Crossing to be on the board um, until they pay their bills, their financial contractual obligations. And then at that time, we work together to see the community grow. So yes, I acknowledge that we have received that petition. And yes, we understand that there's almost 200 signatures on that petition. So we, we have that, let that be on the record that we have that and all of the documentation that the community has taken up to the office um, has been submitted to us. And it's just, there's so much. Um, I don't think any of the board members have been able to get through it all. So in saying all of that, I'd like to ask if there's any specific questions that would like to be asked of Mr. Mosley. And if not, we'd like to continue to move on and move forward with this, um, this meeting. I do have another uh, resident by the name of uh, Mr. Jose Jones. I'm going to go ahead and unmute him now. Okay. Hola. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, this was a question I was trying to ask all the participants, but I didn't know how to raise my hand. <laughs> all uh, right. But, you know, We're it goes for all together. of them. Okay, thank you. But, Mr. Mosley, this one is, uh, what are the candidates' proposals to revitalize the golf course? You know, are we going to resod the grass or pursue, you know, uh, pursue uh, alternative options for recreation? That's not a that's not a question for the Western Hewater District. That's not a board um, for a board of director for the Western Hewater District to take care of the golf course. That's the developer. Here's okay, so a Western Hewater District meaning. I don't know, Matt, if you want to clarify that. 
I, uh, I agree with that. It, 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 this is it completely off topic and not that it's not a valid question. It's just the, the Western Hills Water District has nothing to do with the management operation of the golf courses. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm very confused. I don't know uh, what meeting I'm supposed to be part of, but you know, this is the one that everyone told me to join and to ask questions about. <laughs> So Fair enough. Basically, well, thank you for your question, Amaru. Basically, I have more questions later, but I'm just trying to think of them right now. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take Mr. Jones off, and I am going to add in Sarah. I can't read her last name, but Sarah, are you with us? Yes, thank you. Hi. Hi, Sarah. So my question is for Mr. Mosley. Um, as a non-resident, if you were to be elected to the board or voted on the board, would you be willing to meet with the residents to find out their perspective as to what's going on? Am I still muted or am I, am I back on? You're, you're yeah, I, it would, it, quite honestly, be my pleasure um, to do that. I would, it would be an honor to do it. I'm happy to listen and happy to hear. Um, you know, I, I don't take the opportunity light, lightly. I'm quite excited to be a member um, and to join the board. And, and, and I'll take it very seriously. So yes, you'll see me. You'll see me often and I'll be listening. Okay, so do you have a plan as for when you would want to do that and how you would do that? Because it's one thing to say, but to actually create a plan for that. Um, I am, I, I, I probably would ask the district probably to help set it up, find the place, find the location. We could do it at a house. Um, you know, if you want to take the lead on that, I'm happy to to follow to follow your lead. You know, I can just I can be there shortly, so it's that's not a problem. Okay, uh, yeah, I think the residents have a lot of concerns. Um, ultimately, not just having to do with the bills to be paid, but also across the board, making sure that we have our voices heard. And I think that's very clear with the candidates that are here that we do want a resident or someone who can speak for us. Um, so to kind of have that platform where we are able mm -hmm. to participate more, I think would be an excellent opportunity. And I would love to actually see you kind of take initiative on that um, because the residents have done a lot in terms of trying to fight to be heard. And so to actually have someone come to us and ask us what we're thinking, how we're doing, what we're feeling, and to find out the pulse of the neighborhoods would be a change of pace. Sure, that sounds great actually. And I, I, there's, there's COVID. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe what we can do in terms of like doing it immediately is, is to try to use the technology and do the zoom, zoom. I mean, I'm happy to get, if we can figure out a safe way to do it. I'm happy to get in front of people and, and, and seeing the folks face to face. I'm happy to do that. I'm a people person in that way. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, is that possible to do it under the Western Hewater District or that would be another type of town hall meeting different from the duties of the Western Hewater District being a board member? That's why we have at open public sessions in the board meetings, not a separate, I don't know, uh, according with the Brown Act and that kind of stuff. So that will be a question for David. David Fox. Yeah. And David's muted, if somebody can unmute David. So let me just um, add this. If you mute, if I have unmuted you and you mute yourself, you will have to have permission to be unmuted again. It doesn't automatically do that. Uh, David should be unmuted. Yeah, generally there's no, the, the, pro, the, the Brown Act only prohibits um, what can be construed as a, as a meeting more than a quorum of, of the director's meeting with, with the public. So individuals meeting on their own wouldn't wouldn't violate that so it wouldn't have to be a, a noticed meeting but that, that's so long as so long as we we work together that those can all be set up that's that's not a problem okay um, fantastic i just want to be sure okay so if that is it we we um we need to now discuss as a board um where we're going to move forward to does anyone have a motion to make on a candidate Well, I, I don't have a motion on a candidate, but I, I do want to have the board consider kind of a the the big picture here, and I'll just put my two cents in worth for what it's worth. Um, 
there's a, a, a friction point here, uh, which at the end of the day, everybody's trying to decide how do we motivate the developer to contribute, pay the, the bills that remain to be paid uh, and get involved. Is it by keeping them from the board or by putting them on the board? Uh, and I don't know that I have the perfect answer to that. Uh, my, my, and, and, and I only have my gut instincts, my, my and, and there's no, like I said, there's no perfect answer. Cause if you put them on the board and they don't pay, then you put something, you, you put a representative of, of the developer who's not paying on the board and you have all the issues with the conflicts of interest and you know, what happens when, if you, if the boards, uh, the Western Hills water district sues the developer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one side of the equation. The other side is if if you don't put them on the board, then how are you ever going to really try to hope to get them to cooperate with you and participate with the, the with the community and the residents and be motivated to try to fix the problem that isn't fixing itself. And and right now they're not on the board. They have no voice on the board and nothing's getting paid. So again, I don't know where I come out on this. My gut tells me that it's probably worth the risk of trying to bring them into the tent and then use that, them being part of the process to try to pressure the developer to step up and do something here, then, then penalizing them and keeping them out and locking yourself in a, in a situation where the likelihood is that maybe nothing changes for the next two months, except that the financial position of the Western Hills Water District becomes more precarious. So th those are my, my comments and concerns. Like I said, there's counterbalancing issues on both sides. There's not a perfect answer. Uh, my gut is towards trying to bring them into the tent to try to uh, convince them that they, this problem needs to be fixed because I don't see it getting fixed otherwise. And, and I have also a comment. Um, I really understand the whole community and I understand the feelings of the ones who signed that petition from community. Um, we, haven't, oh, we have seen the facts, the only fact that we have that we have a lot of financial problems and that it can affect the whole project as a whole. Um, I have been a board of director of the West Tejiwara District representing the developer for a lot of years. I know what it is to represent a, um, a developer. And I understand also that as a developer representative, they need to have a seat in a board, in all the boards, even in the um, HOA, they need to have a, a seat and a say because it's their investment. It's in the best interest of the, their investment, but also to the community and to their investment. So. I think they should have a, a seat. Also, it's the only developer that we have here. We don't have a, a, a lot of horses in this race and to pick and choose which developer is going to save us or save the district. Um, the only way that I think Angel Crossing is gonna be accountable, will take ownerships and keep their promises is seeing them in the board, uh, work together with the board and the community and um, that, that, that's my feeling and we need to move forward and also just stop these um, problems and, and throwing mud here, mud, mud there and saying if the board, they didn't do their job, they did, they did not, they are these, they are that, uh, try to steer in the pot and, and we can lose the control. So we need to work all together, developer, board of directors, uh, community, and everyone, because at the end of the day, it's, um, it's our investment in our homes, and we need to give them the chance and uh, the benefit of the doubt. And I think it's a huge responsibility, and a, it's a huge responsibility for angel crosses right now, and more than um, that I thought, I really, I didn't realize all these petitions that the community they sign. It's good to know, it's good that the developer is hearing that, they are listening that there is a lot of people in the community that they are very concerned. That's good. 
thank you for the community uh, for that great participation. That's great. And I think that we need to give them uh, an opportunity and, and trust. That's, that's what I think. And just work together and stop uh, all this uh, trying to get the control power and that's it. That's my comment. All right, well, it sounds like um, one of you make the motion. You don't want to comment anything, Matthew? <laughs> no Let's comment? make the motion. Okay, I motion to a vote for Angel Crossroads representative, um, Mr. Mosley, to sit in the board and give him the opportunity to fix the district and trust. Oh, no, no, Zachariah, how, how do you feel? She just made the motion. Is there a second for the motion? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Zechariah? He's muted. Somebody needs to unmute Zechariah, please. <laughs> Ashley, would you unmute Zechariah? I'm working on it. Sorry, guys, I'm having a technical difficulty on my end. Just a sec. There we go. There Sorry, we Zachariah. Go. All right, so. Oh, not a problem. Did you hear everything, Zachariah? Um, I oh, think so. The motion so. went forward from Carmen to nominate Walter Mosley. It was seconded by Guillermo. I am a nay. What is your vote? Nay. So it's a tie. What happens with a tie, Mr. Hobbs? Uh, no motion carries. All right. So anybody else want to discuss one of the other individuals? What do you mean that uh, I don't understand? So Mr. Mosley went down with a tie vote. So we now need to look at either uh, Mr. Blessing, Mr. Lambert, and unfortunately, Mr. Um, um, Murphy was not available or he never called in, so we were not able to interview him. So Mr. Blessing or Mr. Lambert are still available for someone to... So... I really like both of these individuals. Um, Blessing made a really good impression. Um, you know, I like his depth of experience, particularly in the financial sector. So I think something like that would prove beneficial. On the other hand, I really like Randy as well. What he brings to the table is depth of knowledge on infrastructure, his knowledge and experience on pump management, installation. This yeah. could all really be really helpful, especially where we are right now in getting upgrades, negotiating contracts, understanding um, you know, where prices should be and, and, you know, possibly, you know, just giving us some insight in that entire arena. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm torn. I like, I like them both. I would, Guillermo, what do you feel about, um, which of these two candidates, um, I, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. I, I, I have a question about the, uh, these both. So if, do we need to just say no this candidate no this candidate or just this candidate and that's it or from all the candidates um i'm just voting for this one and that's it or i don't know i don't know we're, we're making we're making a, we're making a motion on if if there's somebody else that we would like you know it's it's whoever would like oh, to make a motion. Okay, but i'd like so to I discuss it. Vote for one. yeah i'd like to discuss it so we're all you know on the same page that's why Guillermo, um, you know, I value your opinion. Um, you, you made, you asked um, Mr. Lambert a question and, um, regarding his water experience and his pump experience and those kind of things. So I was just, where do you stand on these other two um, candidates? So, 
So I, I, I will give you my, I, first of all, I like all the candidates. I thought they were sincere. I thought they answered the questions directly. Uh, I don't have anything negative to say about a single person who submitted their name. And I think that each and every one of them, if they were on the board, would do their level best to, to advance the interests of the board. I, 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 I'm very, very concerned about the decision. And I understand why Zach, Zachariah and, and you, Matthew, voted against Mr. Mosley. I'm concerned about what the implications of that decision might be to the vi financial viability of this board. Um, and so I, I just, it's a, I'm, I'm very concerned that we're going to ostracize the developer. It's the only chance that the Western Hills Water District that I see, uh, short of the residents paying an, an ungodly amount for water, uh, I don't see how we get out of this this trap that we're in, financial trap, w w without inviting them uh, on the board to participate. And, um, and, and so my comment is not with respect to the other candidates, it's just about the, the, the decision that has been made that I think is going to lock us into an outcome that nobody's going to like. Uh, so I, I, so I, I'm very concerned. Uh, and, and I'd almost rather table and not have anybody come on to, so that we have a seat that can remain open to hopefully entice the developer to, to come on board with something. If you take that seat away, it, the, the community is going to have three seats. The developer will have none. World, in my seat, I'm kind of in a, a lame duck. Uh, and Carmen's kind of a lame duck. I, I, I think we're setting ourselves up for failure here. Well, remember, we do have an election coming up where all the seats are going to be up for a vote. So um, when's that? November. Oh, November this year? Oh, I'm sorry. You're up for no. re-election as well as Guillermo. OK, yeah. well, we know what's going to happen with my election. <laughs> 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 I'm I'm gonna go the way of Donald Trump, even though I have uh, do not uh, have anything else in common with him. I don't think. I hope. Anyway, um, okay. So maybe that's um, that's uh, maybe that's uh, the solution. That it's not. This is not a permanent. Yeah, uh, ostracization permanent situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as far answer as your question. I, I like them all. I like them all. Okay. So my my thing is is um, we have over 200 or right around 200, I should say, um, signatures. So that's a third of the community. So, you know, for me, I feel like I need to be a voice for the community. And, you know, when my constituents are writing a petition that's very, very um, heartfelt and they're saying, this is our concern, you know, this is not about me being in a place. This is about the people of this community is, are, have placed me here. And, you know, there's a lot of people scared of losing their water. And, um, you know, we keep talking about, and this is where I just, I, I don't understand why people aren't understanding this. But if <clears throat> Angels Crossing has been here for seven months, seven months, they aren't even paying their trash bill, for goodness sakes. Um, it, I, this, this notion that putting someone on the board is going to change anything. I can't wrap my head around that. I really can't. And nor can a third of the community. And when a third of the community, not just 20 people, not just, I mean, almost 200 people are saying we can't get our head around this either. We have, we, we are not, we're, we're in these positions on this water board, but we have we have to answer to the people. Um, and I feel like that's where my vote is at. I, I, I feel like I need to be there for the people. The people have spoken. A third of the people, that's a lot of people. It's not just a small little group. Um, and so that's where, that's where my vote is at. It's with the people. Um, I want water to flow to their homes. Um, we have a developer that's not paying anything for seven months. 
nothing. And the excuse, the excuse, we don't have representation on the board doesn't fly with me. And I don't think it flies with a third of the community. It really doesn't. They entered into a contract. They entered into it knowingly understanding the subsidy. They understood all the bills. They understood the debt. They understood it all. And they don't have the money. That's, I mean, I know nobody wants to deal with that, but that is the elephant in the room. They don't have the money. And putting someone on the board is not going to change the fact that they don't have the money. I mean, it's just, it's not going to change anything. So we have, we have to, we now have to, as a water board, look at all of our options on how we're going to move forward and secure water to every home up here. So every homeowner can sleep at night knowing that water is going to continue to come through. I mean, yeah. that, that is, and it's imperative. Matthew, and, and all that sounds great, but, but what I'm not hearing is how, I think everybody would agree that those are all the sure. great objectives and everybody agrees with it. But the question is, how do we get there? It's, it's going to be an out of the box thinking, Guillermo. And I can tell you, I have some thoughts and I have some ideas. Um, I am actually currently working on some things that I hope to be able to present to the board maybe come January because I'm waiting for everything to make sure it's going to work. I'm not going to give out false hope, but there are some options. You know, when a few months ago, somebody from the community said, you know, do you have a plan B? And my answer was absolutely not. And then I couldn't sleep for three days. I, I was just like, wait a minute, there has to be a plan B. So for the last 40 days, I've been working on a plan B and I hope to be able to present this plan B to, to the board and to the community soon. Um, I wanna make sure the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed and that there is an actual avenue for this district to be able to provide water to the community. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm working on it. I, I don't have a yes, I have a 100% on it yet, but I'm working on something. And so let me, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You know, I, I guess I, I just have a couple comments. Um, you know, I, I've been on this board for, for, I don't know, 10 years and, 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 and my days here are numbered. And I think there are a lot of people in the community that would like me to roll off and, and I will accommodate that need in the near future. I, I, and I was on the board uh, in representation of world, the same position that Mr. Mosley it was. Uh, I can tell you from that experience that if, 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 if world did not have representation on the board during those years, they, 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 it would have been a huge problem and they would have stopped the financing. There are people who think that we're in this position because of world and, and they're partially correct, but what they're not also taking into account is that, you know, world dumped about, a hundred million dollars into this community, keeping this water district afloat during those 10 years that I was on the board. Yes. So yes. The, the problems that we're facing today were avoided for 10 years simply because world had representation on the board, felt they had a voice on the board and was motivated to try to keep this project afloat. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, it, it, to the extent that we're talking about candidates, my heartfelt belief is all of them are good. I think yeah, I, I don't have anything negative to say about a single person that appeared today. I do think it may, may be unfair for the one candidate who maybe didn't appear if we had technical problems and, and, and that's on our, on our watch that we didn't give that one person an opportunity to, to be vetted. Uh, but let's just set that aside for the moment. I, my, I, I'm going to have a hard time voting. I'm, I'm just going to put my cards on the table because you know me, I'm, I'm very transparent. What you see is what you get. I'm going to have a hard time voting for any candidate because I think it's a fundamentally, uh, it's a fundamental mistake not to bring the, the, the developer into the room. And, and this is, a, there's never been a situation or a time that this water board has had more representation from the community than it does right now. And I, I and, and, I, and I gave away my, my presidency and chair of this, this board to, to, when you requested it of me, 
simply because I believe that the, 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 the community needs to have that voice. But right now you have three, you have two of you, Zachariah and you are clearly from the community. Carmen kind of got a foot in two buckets, right? And uh, uh, she's a member of the community and she's, she represents world's interests historically. I, I'm, I'm just, you know, a lawyer. Right and 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 it and doesn't matter, but but I do fundamentally believe that that the decision not to bring the developer onto the board, I I think you're going to look back on it and, and you're going to regret this decision, uh, because yeah, I, it, it, at worst at worst at worst they they come on the board and they don't pay anything, okay? You got one out of out of five seats, the, and if they don't pay anything, the whole thing goes into the tube. And, and, and it becomes irrelevant because Western Hills Water District will go bankrupt and then it doesn't matter. So if you don't bring them on and the outcome is negative, there's no solution. If you bring them on, at least you have a fighting chance. At least you have a fighting chance to twist their arm and convince them to get on board and fix the financial problem. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get off my soapbox. I apologize for repeating myself, but oh, I, I just I really feel that the, the mistake is being made here. Mm -hmm. I have a resident with uh, her hand up. Is this an open session or is this closed? This is closed. No, it is not. So I don't know if I will break the Brown Act. David, can you help me on that? So if we have all the candidates right now here and we are getting into this discussion that is it's very productive, really. It's, it is. So we're we're hearing the community, we're hearing the board of directors, we're hearing the developers, and Guillermo and myself, we've been in the board. We are really concerned. I've been living here for 12 years almost. I've been playing all the roles, whatever you want here. So I'm concerned, but it's it's a very tough decision. Believe me, it's a very tough decision. I cannot please anybody here in this community for 12 years. I don't want to commit a mistake, but I've been here as a developer for 12 years and I understand uh, both sides. So I don't know if we can bring the candidates again. So what else can, can say about this issue? I understand the issue is about the money that, that Angel Crossed, they haven't put any money into the Western Hill Water District. I don't care the rest. We don't care the rest because that's Western Hill Water District that we are aware right now. So what they want, to, what they want to say about this and keep the community um, in peace, um, give them hope. The problem is the funding. They, they haven't shown any funding. As I mentioned before, we have to pay the water bill that is coming up and the balance. So I don't know if the candidates and actually mostly if he can say something in regards to whatever we are discussing, what he can say to give a, a so hope. Perfect. We're, oh, we're done asking. I don't know. I will break the questions for the candidates. Yeah, huh? we're past that. Yeah, we, oh. we are. We've asked the questions. This is now a discussion trying to figure out well, what to do and who to vote for and what's the right thing to do as Carmen. The questions are over. Okay. okay. Different candidates, all their opinions. Because if we ask Mr. Mosley his opinion on that topic, yeah. we need to ask every single one of them. Um, I agree. We yeah, can't. yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Okay, we can't. Fine. that's what I asked people. Right. So, so here's the thing: we we all because Guillermo makes a lot of great points. Here's the problem: we are not <clears throat> own individual power structures here. Um, you know, Guillermo may have his feelings. I have mine. Everything, but we're here to represent the community. The community. The community, the community. We're a paying third, customers. A third, a third, a third of the community has sent us so much documentation on Angels Crossing and the directors of Angels Crossing, legal documents, all sorts of stuff. I mean, there's so much stuff. I haven't even gotten into it. I, I, there's just too much for me to read before this meeting. I don't even know what it all says, but there's tons of stuff. Well, but there's tons of stuff that's been given to all of us. And, and we, need, we need to we need to read it. But there's also a petition from a third of the community saying they do not want anyone from Angels Crossing on the board 
until they pay their bills. And then they're totally, the community seems to, in this declaration, seems to be totally open to working with them. And so would we be as a board. But how do you work with a company for seven months? They haven't paid anything. I mean, our security can't even dump their trash because the trash bill isn't being paid. Well, uh, what about I mean, this, Matthew? Not, I mean, this Matthew, is silly. This is crazy. Matthew, what about this? What about this? Uh, first of all, I just want to point out a third is not, a third is a third. There's two thirds that either haven't voted or potentially oppose, what, but two thirds are unspoken for right now. So sure. a third is not a convincing number for me. Really? Right. Uh, so, you know, imagine if we elected our president with only a third of the people. Okay. Um, but, but this is, this is grassroots but, people but, walking around knocking on doors here. Uh, uh, I, I understand. And, and listen, I know how fast it is and easy to mobilize this community because I have faced it the, the three times that I tried to raise rate, rates. The, it, right. One weekend, they, they got the, the petition signed to, to sure. oppose the rate increases. So, sure. but maybe, maybe the best decision here today is just to take a pause and, and not commit ourselves and, 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 and base, basically go back to the developer and say, listen, you know, you know, there are a lot of people that want to shoot you right now, right here today. There's at least a third of the community. But maybe the best decision is to leave, uh, have a carrot. We've got a stick. Let's maybe put a carrot out there and say, hey, in the next, you know, 30, 45 days, because this is all going to br help break loose in January, sure. right? Sure. In the next 30, 45 days, come to us with a plan that acknowledges the, how, what you're going to pay, when you're going to pay, and how you're going to pay. And... And then we'll take up the vote because if they come back with a plan that the community supports. Just out of curiosity, what? haven't haven't we been doing that for the last seven months? Haven't I know. I, I, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And, but I, I guess yes. The answer is absolutely yes. And and here we are, right? Right. Uh, my my biggest concern is uh, I'm I'm looking for a carrot. I know we've got the stick, right? I know we've got the stick. I, I'm just looking for a carrot. And 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 I guess I, what is the harm in just? Well, eating? we've been looking for carrots for seven months, and all we're getting is rabbit. <laughs> Actually, we're getting the well, stick. To be honest with you, we've already gotten the stick from that. Right, but so. Zachariah, but what what what, what do you think is going to happen in January? If if okay, let's just let's just go through the let's just go through scenario. We point one of the very good people that from the community. Mm -hmm. And now we've got three three people from the community: Carmen and me, Lane Duck, right? Mm -hmm. then we're facing a huge financial deficit mm -hmm. we have no exit we have we have no f financial source for for that exit mm -hmm. and we have now a developer who's now probably you know more motivated to maybe walk away than they would otherwise be what's and the downside in that well, if they walk away, then, then then this and and we we go into bankruptcy. Then the you know, state will take over. Remember the this: <clears throat> when when Angels Crossing was trying to buy this place, the entire community was screaming, "Let them pay or let them buy it! You better let them buy it. They're their only choice. They're the ones. They're going to change everything. They're going to pay their bills. Everything." Okay, and the community came down on us, Water District, like crazy. And they forced us, I mean, by their just, you better do this. And we all just were like, oh, okay, they're refusing to show us their financials. They're refusing to do this. But the community wanted it. So this water board voted to let them purchase without us having any financial, you know, guarantee. Say so. Say so. Guarantee. Right. And now we're sitting in the same place. And there's an old, old thing that my mom used to say. She said, fool me once, shame on you, but fool me twice, shame on me. We as a board of directors cannot continue to just put our hands in the air and see which way the wind is blowing and, and then vote, you know, just have- Out of desperation. Hazardly. Well, we have responsibility. We have, and, and, and this is really, 
they haven't paid in seven months. I don't understand what they haven't paid. I mean, they haven't paid even a dollar and, 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 and yet they want to sit here and continue to, we want this, we want this, we want this, we want this. I'm just saying, game on you, but I'm not going to sit here and be fooled twice. It's just not going to happen. I, I hear you. I mean, listen, those are all valid points. I understand the emotion behind those points. You've heard my concern, which is, you know, we may be shooting ourselves in the foot. You know, I don't know what the right answer is. I just know that I think, like I, think I said. This community, I think this community is a strong community, um, Guillermo. I think this community is tired of being led by different organizations. And granted, World paid their bills for many years, but at the very end, they stopped. And now Angels Crossing has come in. They don't have the money. That is just a reality. And so, because if they did, they would be paying their bills and building houses. So the point is, th this right. community, as, as long is as the community, this water board should be controlled by the community and ran by the community. And if the developer wants to get involved and they want their hands in the water district, then they should be putting up the money and paying the subsidy and paying their contractual obligations. That is just the way the world works. It's just okay. the way the world works. Matthew, and, 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 and you're right. I mean, it is a strong community. And, and if they're willing to take the risk of, of, of that decision, which could, which it well, could are, potentially- have we, ever had, have we ever had three or four board members run from the community? Have we ever seen a third of the community sign a petition saying, don't do it. I've never seen it for as long as I've lived up here. It seems like we've had to break, you know, like, please, somebody run for the board. We have now this gargantuan amount of people running for the board and are totally involved in this. And, and this is just of the ones. So, I mean, we're uh, having it. There is a group of homeowners standing up and saying, we want to be involved. And I think and, this and, is our and, opportunity. And, 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 and honestly, you know, right now, right now, they are the paying customers. They're the only paying customers. They're the people that we represent, unfortunately. Are if right, Angels Crossing right. was a paying customer, I'd be much more inclined to you give know. and to bend. But they are not Fair a paying enough. customer. So Fair what enough. is their vested but, interest right now in this? I mean, the community, very difficult. However, but the community has, on a historic basis, Zachariah, has only being a paying customer of about 40% of the overhead of the Western Water District. So, so fair, I mean, I, you, you guys, your points are well taken. The community just needs to understand that if, if, if this goes to hell in a handbasket, people's rates are gonna go up, you know, by a factor of 10. And, and, and if, they, if they're willing to, to bear that risk, um, uh, uh, then, you know, with, you know, the Guillermo, with all due respect, we're already there. <laughs> it's going to happen. They're not paying. They're not going to pay, right? Well, uh, do, does anyone that, does anyone honestly think in this meeting that they're all of a sudden just going to start paying? Oh, they got them on the board. Now they're going to start paying. I, I I just don't see it. We're already right. there. So right, I don't enough. see how how moving the chips around in these variables are going to change the facts like, on the ground. Would you like to make a motion? Do well, you think I that mean, the community wants to take the risk? Do you think that the whole community or the community wants to take the risk? They really want to I take mean, the risk? We lost may, the, the developer and then it's done? Yeah, maybe maybe that's maybe that's maybe we should really, you know, if 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 this petition, maybe if there were more time and 60% of the community said, you know what, hell no, no angels crossing, then we would have a mandate from the community which was clear. Right now, I see one third. Uh, if sixty percent of the or if fifty one percent of the community said we don't want Angels Crossing, and we're willing to take the financial risk because we don't believe they're going to pay, then we would have a mandate. Why not? Then you know, let this petition give it another thirty days and and, and get that fifty one percent. Yeah. Would you? Like, then we would have. Would then we'd have a clear direction. Person? I, I, okay, I'll make a motion. I, I, I'll, I'll make a motion that we table the election uh, of, of, of the officer for a period of 30 days to allow the community time 
to express their vote as to whether they want a member of the Angels Crossing on the board or not. And if the community comes back and says 50 and 51% of the community says they don't, then I think we need to respect those wishes. But if, but if, if the, if 60% of the community says we do, because we don't want to run the financial risk, then we have to respect those wishes. Let the well, community decide. So is there a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Nay. Carmen, what's your vote? Aye. I'm a nay. I'm a nay. I think we need to vote for someone tonight. Okay. I like both Blessing and Randy. I think either of them would be a great asset to the board. Um, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion for Randy Lambert to be elected to the board. What is the reason that you go for Randy? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I really like his depth of knowledge on the infrastructure. Him being a water engineer is extremely beneficial. Um, his experience in pump management and the installation process, potentially negotiating contracts with those who are gonna be executing the work, uh, just helping out all around. I think it's a great asset. It'd be very helpful to us. Yeah, this is a tough one. I like Mr. Blessing. I think he came across as very articulate. Um, I feel that he, um, he has a lot of um, corporate knowledge as well. Uh, <laughs> I do. I, gosh, they're both. Look, if we're going to go with a community based, you know, board where we are really trying to do what we want to do and get things through, then I look at Randy and I say he has the structural knowledge, the water knowledge, and the, you know, there's got to be a lot of improvements to this water board moving forward. He has a whole lot more. Oh my gosh. Oh, um, well, I, um, this one's tough. Um, what was your motion, Zachary? Was it for, um, it was for Randy, Mr. Lambert? Yeah. All right, I will second that motion. It's a tough decision, but I, I, between Blessing and Randy, I just, I feel that if, if, if we're gonna, and, and like Guillermo pointed out, we have a, a tough three months ahead of us because we're in, in, in a tough spot. Um, I think the engineer is gonna be a much better Matt, I think you're Is everybody frozen. Yeah, there you go. go. You're back. You were you were frozen there for a minute. I'm oh, sorry. I'm I'm for Mr. Lambert, only for the reasons that his engineer background, water background, moving forward as a community, we we probably that would be an asset on the board. Um, I think that's going to be a huge asset. So I'll, okay, I will second that, Mr. Blessing. I I think you're also. I mean, if I could have you both, it would be awesome. I think if two of you could be on the board, it'd be great. Um, nice. I will second that. So all in favor? Aye. No. Nay. All right, so Randy Falls. So then Mr. Uh, Blessing. Do we have a second on Mr. Blessing? Who motion? Do motion? Yeah, yeah. Make motion for having Mr. Blessing take the spot. Who second it? Anybody second it? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? No. Guillermo. 
Amanai, Irmo. Uh, I'm a nay. All right, so everyone that we interviewed tonight has gone down to defeat. So no one will be placed on the board of directors um, seat and we will move on to the next action items. Um, point B, we need to approve the resolution 2020-11 Resolution of the Western Hills Water District, approval of expenditures of approximately 50,000 of Diablo Grande Community Facility District Number One Melrose Bond refinance proceeds for the payment of immediate water district expenses. Do we have I'll, a second? I'll second? I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then point C, approval of resolutions 2020-12, resolution of the Western Hills Water District, approval of expenditures of approximately 3,215.91 for Diablo Grande Community Facility District 1, Melarus bond refinance proceeds for the payment of the BNY Mellon for trust um, trustee administration fees for series 14 invoice number 252-231-2014 and number D20259P0007. Do we have a second on that? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then point D, consider the appointment of Ashley Wilkins to the position of board secretary. Um, as we know, um, uh, Tracy um, left us and um, we now have Ashley working in the front office and we need to appoint her to as our board secretary. Um, do we have a second on that? I'll, I'll, I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then uh, Mr. Hobbs, do we need to, does she take an oath or no? Um, I, you know, I don't know, go ahead and give her the oath. No, she doesn't need to take the oath, I don't think, that's fine. Okay. All righty, um, and then point E, consider the motion to cancel the December 9th, 2020 Western Hills Water District Board meeting and make it for January, I believe it's the 12th or 13th, January 13th, Wednesday, January 13th. We have a second. So, let me, let me, can I be heard on that? Oh, absolutely. Um, so I'd like to go back to the fact that obviously we, we are in, at an impasse, right? Uh, as, as far as the election of the board member. Uh, and, and, I, and I just wanna be transparent. I voted nay because my conscience is that it's the wrong decision. And, I, and if, if it's gonna be the decision of the community, I'd wanna see a mandate from the community, 51%. So uh, I'm gonna suggest that we schedule another uh, election meeting, you know, three weeks from now whatever is a fair time period for the petitioners uh, to go around uh, and, and, and see if they can get 50, more than 50% of the community. And, and, and they've done it before. And if they do, I, I, would be, I would be influenced by that decision of the community. Because right now, all I have is one third and that's not enough for me. Okay, so um, that sounds good. Thank you, thank you. The, um, that's that uh, your your the concept is great. Um, due to the holidays, due to the weather changing up here, um, due to the COVID, due to the governor's um, curfew stuff going on now, and all these different things, um, I still think we should go and make that um, January for another roll roll at the candidate statements and fine. Uh, I, I would accept that as an amendment. Go to de December. It's getting cold up here. It's rainy. There's all these different things. I think I think that that's too soon, um, and it's I, the holidays. People are going away from town. People are. Doing I, I agree. I agree. I, hang on. I, I do want to point out that it is, it, it's possible because there was nobody appointed that somebody could petition the Stanislaus County Board of Supervisors to try and appoint somebody. So I'm just making everybody aware of that. I, I don't know that they would take it up, but it is an option. I understand. Yeah, that's their right. I mean. But, but I would accept your amendment, which is to push it to January. The only reason I was wanting to do it earlier is because I, I have a feeling that there's a, a January payment date to Kern County right. that, uh, that, 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 you know, uh, I'm just- well, it, it can't not, be paid. I mean, it's not yeah. gonna be paid. I mean, if yeah. I tell you, if a check comes in to Kern County for $2 million um, in the next week and all of the water bills get, 
made by Angels Crossing, we'll have an immediate board meeting and we will run candidates like like there was no tomorrow. I mean, yeah, un understood. Uh, check here. Uh, They're not going to pay the bills. Fair enough. All right, so let's push it to January, and cool. and 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 then at that so point. Do we have a second we'll, for the motion. Motion for no, second, then. December 9th and moving it to January 13th. Second. Yes, on. I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then any reports by district staff? No. All right. Reports of any board members? All right, public comments, not um, on items, not on the agenda. So these are public comments, not on the agenda, not things that we've already rehashed and gone over through this, but anything that you guys want to bring up. Interested persons in the audience um, are welcome to introduce any topic within the district's jurisdiction. Matter presented under this agenda item may be discussed, but no action can be taken by the board in this meeting except to follow. Briefly respond to statements made or questions raised. If we want to ask a question or for clarification, provide a reference to staff or other resources for factual information, request staff to report back at a subsequent meeting, um, and a board member of the board itself may take action to direct a staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. And so now, actually, uh, as people raise their hand, they can ask a question, or if uh, we're having a hard time doing that, and they chat one, if you notice a question, um, we can read the question. And um, if we want to make a comment, we can, or we'll just make a notation that the question's been asked. And OK, I do have a resident waiting. Uh, this is Sarah. And I'm going to go ahead and unmute her now. All right. Hi, Sarah. Hey there. Um, just for future board member interviews, that kind of thing. Um, may I recommend or ask that there be a standardized list of questions? Because I feel as though the first two candidates did not get the same amount of time or the same level of questioning as you know the third candidate. And I feel like the community really would have benefited from some of those same answers um, because those really were some in-depth questions and I really would have liked to hear the responses of those first two. Absolutely, thank you very much for that question and that's duly noted. Any other questions? I have Jose. I have Jose Jones. I'm unmuting now. Go ahead, Jose. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yeah. Jose. Hola, uh, Miss Ashley Wilkins. Will there be a link to the Zoom meeting regarding the water board available to the public? Uh, Matt, can you answer that? Have you done that in the past? If if it's been recorded. Um, we will work on that. Again, this is our first meeting via Zoom and all the kinks haven't been worked out. And so if there is one, yes, it will be presented and we'll find that out as soon as this meeting's over. I, I Okay, uh, where could I find that? We will, um, we'll put it on the, the website for the district. Okay, all right. But I got uh, recorded or not. We've had so much technical difficulties this evening that it's very possible that it did not record. I just don't know. I don't have the answer. I won't know until after the meeting. So if, okay. it, if, it, if it did, then yes, we'll make a link for it to be on the website. All right. So would that be me emailed out to all the um, community uh, no, members or will it be... Um, it would be found on the actual um, Western Hills Water District website. If, if okay, okay. I'm available uh, on there. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. I don't see any more hands raised. Oh, oh I, I sorry, I have one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, when will the next meeting be? January the 13th, Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. Wednesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And it'll be at four, it'll, uh, the executive session will start at 4 p.m. Well, actually, we started at four, but then we break to our executive session and then we'll come back in 
at um, 5 p.m. for the regular session. Okay, okay. And that, will that be open to the public as well? The 5 p.m. session would be yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, uh, gracias, senor. Hey, thank you, sir. Okay, I have our next resident, uh, Fonda Jean, and I will... Just one second, trying to unmute her. Zachariah has been muted again. Awesome, thank you. All right, Fonda, are you with us? Hello. Hello. Uh, we maybe we lost her. Let's Fonda, if you can hear us, let's try that one more time. Who 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 are we trying to find, Ashley? That was Fonda Jean. But it looks like she has disconnected from uh, the Zoom. Okay. Any other any other questions? Um, Gary Rojas is trying to ask a question. Um, I noticed this on the chat. It just is popping up. Um, I don't know. If just to be clear, there are there there is a long feed. Okay, I have Fonda coming back in. There is a long feed of chat. I don't know how to address those unless they, you know, raise their hands. Uh, Fonda. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, Fonda, are you there? Fonda? So, um, Ashley, I don't know about who you're trying to get, but Gary Rojas, if you see him, he's trying to raise his hand. If you see his, um, I don't know if he's directly under me in my column, the way I'm seeing it, but I don't know if you're seeing it the same way. Gary's, you're... Un Gary's, Gary's currently unmuted. Hi, Gary. You have a question? Thank you very much. Hey, yes. Thank you very much for taking my call. Um, so, Really quick, guys and girls, you know, I moved into the community back in September of 2008. Um, a month to me, a month later, um, driving up to the clubhouse, there was a sign on the on the on the clubhouse saying we're closed, and uh, then the announcement of the bankruptcy came to follow. Um, my question to you, Matt. And, and the home residents on the board, what are the pros and cons if we go bankrupt, the water district? Ooh. I, I didn't hear the question. I got locked up. I'm so sorry. I guess my question would be, what, what, do, you, what do you feel in your opinion? And this would really go to everybody on the board that are homeowners. What would be the pros and cons if the water board did go bankrupt? Um, well, um, that um, situation um, is definitely um, a, a very serious one that we probably will be visiting in the future, the near future. Um, there, there's a lot more pros in my estimation than negatives. Um, by restructuring the water district, um, it could provide um, it could provide some stability. Um, it would also maybe allow us to have some other options available to us. So water would be able to flow to people's homes. Um, 
you know, I, I kind of alluded a little bit that I'm working on something that I'm just not ready to present to the entire community and or the board until I really know that it could work. Um, but I do believe that no matter what Guillermo hit on a really important point that in the short term, even, even if my plan that I'm working on were to go through and it could work and the board would agree and, and the community would get behind it because that's important that the community would get behind it. If, if even my plan were to go through, there would be a short term period of, of higher water bills. It, 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 would, it would be a reality um, and, 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 and that's why Mr. Um, or Guillermo, you know, mentions that in even his questioning, because we know that there is this $8,000 contract that we're in, this water contract, you know, um, I, I don't agree with Angels Crossing's um, version of it being the worst in California. I understand that that's what they say. But that's just not correct. I've talked to enough people now in the state of California with, within water districts to know that actually our $8,000 contract is actually an amazing contract. It's an actually amazing price. Um, the problem is, is we haven't had developers develop enough to where there's less of an offset. And so the problem isn't the contract. The problem is we don't have enough development. So in the short term, no matter what happens, the, the community is going to have to get behind the fact that rates are gonna go up. With the plan I'm trying to come up with and I'm hoping it could maybe work and I hope to be able to present it later on um, if I find out it could work, um, I would have a short term period of higher prices and then in the long term, prices would be able to go way lower. Um, it, it, it's, but again, I don't, I don't want to give the community a a sense of there's there's this other thing until I know for sure. And that's why hopefully maybe by January, even I will have enough information that I can present to the board, present to to the community as. A possibility that we could discuss and talk about and hash it back and forth. But the reality is, is and your your point was about bankruptcy. Um, that issue has to me in what I'm working with and grappling with. There's a lot more pros to me in that than negatives. Um, I don't, you know, it it, it depends on where you're going to go after the restructuring. You know, it, and those are a lot of factors that, you know, unfortunately it's just, it's tough to talk about when, and I don't want to throw things out that I, I'm just unsure of right at the moment. So I'm, you know, the community doesn't necessarily know what us volunteer board members do, but I can tell you for the last 40 days, um, I have not been off my phone with people talking and trying to find out answers and communicating to try to get answers for this community. Um, my heart is for this community and it's to see that water flows to every home up here. Um, that is my, I mean, the paying customer is, is where my heart's at. And so I'm working on some things, but I'm not, I'm not comfortable even with what I'm finding out. I I'm not comfortable yet saying this is the way to go or, Hey community, I got some answers. I'm still working on some things. And there's a lot more that I need to get answers to, um, before I'm confident. But I hope that answers your question. But yes, bankruptcy to me and what I'm working through, I think that might actually have more pros than cons, the restructuring of the district. That's I appreciate that, man. For me. David, do you have any input about that? Or any no, experience? No, no, not at all. No, no. <laughs> there's 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 so many ins and outs and especially for a, for a public comment session and a board meeting, I, it, I don't even think it could be addressed. So no. no. Okay. I do have another resident. Uh, Jose Jones is back. I'm going to go ahead and unmute him now. 
Okay. See, I, sorry, I forgot another question I had was uh, uh, the, the Mr. Senor uh, Guillermo Moreno. Uh, you you mentioned earlier that you were a lame duck and that you are going to be, uh, 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 there's an election that's going to take place uh, that would uh, probably take you off the board. Uh, what, what date is that? I don't know. I, that's what I, uh, Matthew seems to think it's November of this year. It is 21. The, the, the 21st? No, no, no. Just, I don't, we don't have a date of the election yet, but it'll be in November of 2021. Oh, 2021. Okay. Uh, uh, do, uh, do you guys think that the community will be able to survive a year? Or do you? Um, I, I can answer that simply because the developer has refused to pay their bills for seven months. We are in a very dire place. We just are. And um, there are going to be a lot of decisions being made in the next few months on how the Western Hills Water District moves forward to ensure water is able to come to every home treated up at the treatment plant. There are serious decisions. And, that, and I'm telling you, I haven't rested since you know, the last three months, I'm trying to work on that. So yes, it's very serious. Um, I can't put a date on it. I'm not going to put a date on it, but we are in a very serious situation. Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, 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 if I have more questions, I, I will ask them later, but uh, I can't think of ones right now, uh, other than to try to make some way for the community to make money so we can start paying the bills ourselves instead of having to worry about the developer who seems to be uh, 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 dragging their feet. Well, thank you, Jose, for your, um, your comments. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay. Uh, gracias. Any other questions, Ashley, of anybody? I'm gonna try. <clears throat> I'm going to try one more time for Fonda Jean. Fonda, can you hear? Are you there? She is unmuted. Fonda? OK, it doesn't sound like I'm getting through to her on her end. Um, aside from that, I don't see any other. I notice there's up. a lot of questions coming in the chat side. Um, I can just sort of speak to a couple. Um, there's some people saying, where is our legal team ensuring Angels Crossing performs on their contract? That's one question. Um, we are, we are looking at all legal, um, possibilities. That's just, we are doing that. Um, so I just want to let you know that. Um, I did. I did notice that um, someone said uh, on there they cannot get our prices up without us. They have tried before, twice. Let's not fall for that. Um, I just want to let um, the community understand that um, I want to make sure prices go down, not up. But th there is a reality when you don't have the developer paying their, their subsidy. Uh, this isn't this isn't about the Western Hills Water District trying to take more money from the community. This is not the situation. And if you think it is, then you haven't researched the community and you haven't researched how the water works up here. Um, so Angels Crossing signed a contract when they bought this place and they agreed to pay a subsidy. And the subsidy is the difference between what water we use and what water we have to purchase via the contract. And they're not paying for their own water, let alone any of the subsidy. So that is where the debt is racking up with Kern County. So someone has to pay that or the water's not going to flow to your home. That's the reality. And, and I mean, <laughs> there's, there's just no way around it. The, the contract has to be paid. And, and we have to do something about that. And so again, I'm working on something, but you know, in, under the current contract that Angels Crossing signed when they purchased this place, they agreed to pay the subsidy and they're not paying it. That is just reality. 
But also, Matt, um, you need to explain that this master agreement that I've been talking since the beginning is not only for Angel Crossing, it was for <laughs> Diablo Grande LP, for World, for yes. Angel Correct. Crossing. Any developer yes. um, has to assume that it's not only Angel Crossing, yes. it's the Every any developer, any developer wants to be here. Right. Correct. And, 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 and I'll add to that, that is something where I'm looking at is how can we, you know, lower rates and also, is there something we can do about that subsidy issue so future developers might actually, you know, not have to, to go down that route? You know, even though Angels Crossing is not paying their bill right now, um, I, I, I'm trying to find out solutions for all sides of it. Um, and I believe there may be some solutions out there, but I'm just not ready yet to talk about them. All right, any there other is, questions? There is another question. Why are, they, why are they not paying? What is the reason? I'm sorry, what, Carmen? That there is another question from the public. Oh. Why are they not paying? What is their reason? Million dollar question. Huh? I, I, I said that's the million dollar question. Up. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to find the question on chat. What was it again? One more time, because I just came out of being frozen. The, the, the question that was in the chat group was, "Why is it the developer paying now?" And and and, okay, and I don't know that. Any, go ahead. I have no idea. They probably don't have the money. Yeah, yeah. none of us had. No, no, that's none of us have an answer to that one right we don't have an answer but what's logical i mean so well, I know, I that's, another... that's that's but you're 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 concluding but you don't know right we don't I mean, we should we should have asked mosley we should have asked walter mosley that's a good that's a good he, point Guillermo. Well, that's a very good point <laughs> yeah he's the only guy yeah, in the that's, room yeah. that would have that's the million idea. dollar question right yeah exactly true. i do have a couple of residents with their with their hands up uh, this one is Zoom JD. I'm going to go ahead and unmute right now. Can you hear us, Zoom? Can you hear me? Sure. Yes. Hi there. Um, I was just thinking that um, I think a lot of people probably don't really understand what the subsidy necessarily is for and um, some of the history on the water district, which might help. And so one of the things is the Melarus that everybody pays on their they pay it with their property tax bill. Um, that money goes to the county and then is sent over to the water district. And then of course they pay the bondholders. That Mellow Roos, which is originally the millions, it was about $57 million. So we funded this water district, the residents up here. And then also um, the, the Mellow Roos that the developer is paying or actually they're not paying now um, is also part of that. What happens is if the developer doesn't develop, which they haven't for 15 years, um, they continue to have to pay it, even though they're not paying any of it. And um, we are all paying our portion for the water district. So um, I think people need to know that we are paying a lot of money for the water district. Um, and if they would have built um, lots, which nobody seems to be doing, they would be um, getting rid of some of that debt. And if they added customers by building that lot, those lots, um, they would not have a subsidy. So the subsidy that they're paying for is, I mean, really, and I know Guillermo's just the attorney for World, so it's not his issue that they didn't build, but nobody built anything. And I feel like we're always being blamed as a community for what the developer has not and is not doing. And then we're told we need them. Um, and I just don't think that that's the case because obviously Angels Crossing is not paying anything. So if we're saying we're taking a risk, I'm, we're already, I mean, we're already paying everything on our own. And they're using the bond money from that refinance that we had to pay ongoing expenses for Angels Crossing. So now we're paying the bills that Angels Crossing is supposed to be paying. So I think that, you know, maybe um, 
there needs to be some some information so that the residents realize that that we're actually footing the bill for Angels Crossing right now because they were obligated under that contract to pay that money. So I have 30 seconds left. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I just think it's important for people to realize what's going on. They're in breach of contract, serious breach of contract, and they're not paying anything. I, there's no excuse to me. A real developer would have come in here day one and started developing. They would not be sitting around letting the golf course die. This is just ridiculous. Okay, thank you, Zoom JD. I'm going to go ahead and move on to uh, Lampia. And are you with us? Hi, everyone. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, hypothetically, if we're going to bankruptcy or if there's a litigation, who will be paying the bill for that? So anything that has to do with legal questions, we are not able to discuss in this meeting. Um, we, we don't want to speculate or go into that in this particular meeting. Okay, thank you. Well, I mean, I do, Matthew, I do think it's, I mean, I'm not going to provide a legal opinion, but you know, if they were to be sued, you would have to hire, hire a law firm. Law firms don't work for free. They're going to want a retainer and they're going to want to get paid hourly. They'll come up with a litigation budget. And, and then the, the real question is, regardless of whether that's a dollar or a hundred thousand or five hundred thousand dollars, where does that money come from? Because we, we don't have it. That's that's the, the that's the elephant in the room, right? Any other questions? All right, so um, our next regular meeting will be January, the Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. And um, um, Guillermo and Carmen requested that the community um, use that time to get 50 or 51% of the community signing a petition. Um, so, that's up to the community, but we will wait to hear from the community on that. And uh, I wish everyone a happy holiday and a motion to adjourn. Moved. All in favor? Second. Aye. 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 All right. Have a good night, everyone. Happy Bye -bye. holidays. And Ashley, um, you'll just wait for everyone to get out of the meeting and then you will hit the end all. Okay. People will start going out and- um, Yeah, I see that. Um, so we definitely wanna to check to see if the recording occurred. Um, it should have, um, but we were having some- Yeah, I see, the, I, I see the option here to pause or stop recording. Um, so I'll right. look into that as soon as this is done. Yeah, so right, you can hit stop recording now and then it should ask you to save the file and then just go ahead and save it. And then um, I would listen to it just to make sure it actually works. And if it does, then post that to the website for, with a link so people can um, listen to it and get it for themselves. And if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, okay, so it says, is, if yes, you will receive an email notification when the cloud recording.